dear students in physics in the section heat now we are going to see another experiment in this experiment what we are going to do is the determination of the specific heat capacity of a solid substance by the method of mixtures right finding the specific heat capacity of solid substance right usually metals metals are the ones that we use here uh, later we will see okay there is one past paper question after doing all this experiment i will show you using this method itself how to find uh, specific heat capacity for materials such as plastic yeah which are rare conductors or insulators actually yes we'll we'll see all that look at the concept when a warm substance and a cold substance are mixed if no losses of heat to the surroundings take place then the heat lost by the warm substance is equal to the heat gained by the cold substance let me explain this to you we are going to take a calorimeter with water right let's say this is at 30 degree 30 degrees centigrade what do you do you add some metal metal balls which are at 100 degree into this you drop them in so these metal balls are at 100 degree water is at 30 degree so immediately the heat will flow from the metal balls to the water so when the heat gets transferred from the metal balls to the water the temperature of metal balls will start falling from 100 degree it will come down to 90 80 70 because it's giving away the heat and who is receiving the heat water and calorimeter calorimeter since this is uh, usually we use copper calorimeter since it is in touch with the water it will get uh, heat from the water as well so at the start both calorimeter and water will be at 30 when these metal balls are dropped in they release the heat so water and calorimeter get that heat their temperature will go up 30 will become 32, 34, 36, 38, 40, 42. Likewise, the temperature will increase. So, this 100 starts falling. This 30 starts increasing. At some point, both of those substances temperature, that is temperature of metal balls and temperature of water will become equal. That's what we call uh, equilibrium, heat equilibrium, thermal equilibrium right once the temperatures become equal let's say 42 degree at 42 degree temperature of uh, 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 water is 42 temperature of metal balls is also 42 now their temperatures are equal there won't be any more heat transfer which is an equilibrium scenario thermal equilibrium right if we have insulated this system properly and if there is no heat loss to the environment, assuming there is no heat loss to the environment, then I can say heat lost by metal balls. That metal only, I'm going to find the specific heat capacity. Heat lost by the metal balls should be equal to heat gained by calorimeter and there will be a stirrer inside that we keep a stirrer to mix the water why to maintain uniform temperature within the water otherwise when you drop the uh, uh, heated metal balls near the metal ball water will be having one temperature which is high bit away from that when you go farther and farther from that the temperature might not be the same temperature might be lower right so we keep stirring it to ensure there is uniform temperature within the uh, calorimeter and water 
yeah so heat gained by calorie meter stirrer and water we made an assumption there is no heat loss to the environment so when metal balls release the heat that is gained only by water calorie meter and the stirrer how do we calculate this heat loss by metal balls if we know the mass of it let me say mm we can measure it how do you measure it before you drop the metal balls find the weight after you drop the metal balls again find the mass the difference has to be metal metal balls mass metal balls mass into cm that's what we have to find into delta theta it was at 100 suppose if it is uh, the equilibrium is at 40 100 to 40 it's 60 degree drop heat gained by all these calorie meter and stirrer together let's say the weight is mc the mass is mc m calorie meter cc water mw cw how do you measure the mass of the water before you fill this with water take the empty calorie meter put the stirrer inside that measure the weight then fill the required amount of water measure the weight multiplied by delta theta for them delta theta will be they were originally suppose if it was at 30 degree and if equilibrium is at 40 10 degree extra here we can find all these we can find mc mw m masses we can find calorie meters heat capacity specific heat capacity usually it's copper calorie meter that you find in the laboratories you can use 400 as the specific heat capacity right if it is another another material say if it is an aluminium one you can find that you can find the uh, heat capacity of aluminium and you can use it there water specific heat capacity is considered to be 4200 we know that theoretical value we can use that delta theta we know for this also we can find the delta theta the only thing that is missing here is cm the specific heat capacity of the particular metal that we have used solve this you can find cm clear so this is what the experiment is so that's a concept very important you have to ensure you insulate it properly there is no uh, a heat transfer to and from the environment right see what materials and apparatus are required for this you need a calorie meter a boiling tube now what is this boiling tube listen carefully now you said these metal balls are heated up to approximately 100 degree and you are dropping them in how do we heat them to a high degree high high temperature can we put them into a water bath and, and, and heat them? No, we can't. You know why? If you put it into a water bath and heat it, when you take it out of the water bath, let's say, okay, we do this. Let's say we do this. You take a water uh, uh, container, put these metal balls inside, you heat them. If you heat like that, fine, you can keep a temperature uh, 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 thermometer to measure the temperature let's say you maintain the temperature at 90 degree keep it at 90 degree okay now you know the metal balls are at 90 degree you want to take them we have to take it from here and put it into the calorie meter how do we put it okay so let's say you use some forceps or something you take these metal balls and you put it there problem when you take the metal balls out of this water bath there will be water around it how are you going to make sure the metal balls are dry before you drop them in the calorie meter? Why it has to be dry? Because we assume only metal balls are dropped here. We will measure the initial weight. We will we'll measure the weight after we drop the metal balls. Difference we are going to assume it's metal. Only that metal. So if there is water, if it is a wet metal ball, when you drop it inside, you are not dropping only the metal. You are dropping some water as well which will be an error in the calculations because in the calculation we did not consider any hot water being dropped in here we assumed only the hot metal that has been put in 
right so we have to ensure metal balls are dry if we if we this is this, is, this has been asked in the exam right why can't we boil uh, or heat these metal balls in a in a water bath because when you take it from the water bath and drop it into the uh, calorie meter we cannot ensure that these uh, steel balls or the metal balls are dry you may ask me a question can't we take a blotting paper or, or the the filter paper take these metal balls put it on them wipe it nicely and put it you can't take much time after taking from here to drop here because here this is the point where you measure the temperature let's say at 90 degree or 100 degree you are taking from there without any time delay quickly you have to transfer it quickly why if you take a lot of time in between if you take it wipe it and do all that by the time you drop it here it is not going to be at the temperature that you measured here you measured 100 degree here you take it wipe it do everything nicely uh, look at it whether it is shiny and then you put it here when you are putting it it's not 100 then might have come to 80 or 70 but you are going to assume it's at 100 understand so we can't we don't have an option of wiping the metal balls before you put it here heat it measure the temperature immediately you transfer it immediately you transfer it right that's why this arrangement is impossible this we can't do right so what uh, then you may ask me a question what can't we do this okay can't we do this You take these metal balls in a plate or something, keep a thermometer also here. Now you boil them or you, you heat it up. Can't we do this? We can. The problem of getting dry metal balls, okay, we can do it here. There is no water or anything, you are just directly heating the metal balls. Let's say now the temperature shows you. 100 degrees and uh, 100 degrees centigrade is the reading from the thermometer understand these metal balls okay if i enlarge them okay they are in spherical shape where you keep the thermometer this is your thermometer So, the thermometer, it touches the outer surface of this metal ball. When thermometer shows you a reading of 100 degree, the outer surface is at 100 degree. The outer surface is at 100 degree. Inside the, inside the metal ball, sometimes the temperature might be lower. Why is it lower? It takes some time when you are heating, you are heating actually the outer space, outer surface. From the outer surface, heat to go in, heat has to penetrate and go into the center, it takes some time. So if you want to ensure entire metal ball is at 100 degree, what you have to do is, you have to maintain the temperature around them, around this metal ball at 100 degree for some time. Here we can't maintain like that because you okay you heat it further then outside will go to 110. By the time outside goes to 110 inside is 100, 108 or 107. You heat it further this goes to 120. Inside it may not be 120. So if you directly heat the metal balls like this it's difficult to ensure the metal balls inside and outside are at the same temperature. Remember what we measure is the outside temperature not the internal temperature of the metal balls. So how do we deal with this problem? This is what we are going to do. Look at this. We can take a container. Fill this with water. Inside that, inside that, in the lab you can find this uh, instrument. Okay. 
there will be a tube like this. There will be a tube like this. Look at this carefully. This tube is usually made out of copper or some metal, which is a good conductor of uh, heat. Right. Now what happens? If you drop something inside here, it will just fall here, right? It will it'll come inside and it will come out. Where is this tube? It's in the center of the container. Right, it's in the center of the container. There's a tube goes in and it comes out like this. I've shown you the cross section. Then there is another piece here. See, there is another piece like this. So, what this does, like, let's say you drop something inside this. Can you see one side of this is a bit lengthier? The tube, tube, the red color tube I have drawn here. The red color tube, tube means that's a metallic tube, huh? not, not anything else, the metallic uh, tube. That, that comes all the way here and it blocks this side. So now if you drop something inside, let's say you drop some metal ball inside, it will come, fall here and it will remain there, it can't go out. If you want to take it out, what you can do, the red color tube, you just rotate it. When you just rotate it, what will happen? This side will come like, this, this, this side will get opened. When I do the experiment, I'll show it. I'll show it you, right? So what we do, we will drop all these metal balls here and we will keep a thermometer also and then we are going to heat this up. We are going to heat this up. See what happens. The water will get heated. Maybe initially it was at 30, it gets heated to 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. If the pressure is maintained at the atmospheric pressure, we will have an opening here to maintain the pressure at atmospheric pressure. There will be an opening like this. Right. Now when you heat it, the pressure is same. At 100 degrees, start, the water will start boiling. It will reach the boiling point, approximately 100. Whatever the boiling point, at that boiling point, the water will get uh, starting to boil. Then the steam will get generated. If the pressure increases, some steam will go out. That's fine. We don't want to collect steam here. So let the steam go out. Doesn't, doesn't matter. But at 100 degree, until all this water boils fully, until all this water gets evaporated, it's going to remain at 100 degree, right? Because you know, after water reaches 100 degree, then it needs the latent heat for it to vaporize. Latent heat is a huge amount. So when you're heating with the Bunsen burner like this, little by little the heat goes in, it takes few minutes, like 10-15 minutes for all the water to boil. So, for that 10-15 minutes after the water reached 100 degree, then it starts to vaporize, right? Once it starts to vaporize, until all the water finishes, it remains at 100 degree because it's consuming the latent heat, 100 degree or whatever the boiling point. Then what happens? This environment remains at 100 degree for some time, for some time. 10-15 minutes, it's only at 100 degree, it doesn't go up. 
If this is 100 degree, then these tubes also will get increased 100 degree. The temperature will go in, temperature will go in and the metal balls outside surface will come to 100 degree. Outside surface will come to 100 degree. Still you are maintaining 100 degree. After a couple of minutes, the internal substance, the center of that metal ball also will come to 100 degree. Understand? So, it's essential when you are heating metal balls, you, at, you have to use a stable temperature. It can't be continuously rising. Doing something like this, there is no stable temperature. It keeps increasing. If it is keeping on increasing, if it is, if it is keeping on increasing, problem you have, you cannot ensure the outer surface and the internal part of this ball, metal balls, uh, will be at the same temperature, cannot be ensured. That's why we use water, steam. So we know at that point, boiling point remains constant for some time until all the water vanishes. It's going to be, if the boiling point is 100, it remains at 100, stable at 100 for a few minutes. If it is 100, then the, surf, the surface of uh, metal balls will become 100. Then the internal part also will become 100. This is the setup we are going to do to heat up the Lead, uh, the lead shots. Lead shots means lead metal, metal balls, small, small balls. We call it lead shots. Boiling tube. So, this is what we call boiling tube and water bath. But like nowadays in the laboratory, you will have this instrument. Early days when these instruments were not there, you have to take a water bath separately. Huh? Water bath. Then you have to take a tube, put all these metal balls inside that, heat it. Right at 100 degree, the water will start vaporizing. Doesn't matter, the water, all the water is going to be at 100 degree. Keep it for a few minutes. Check the, how do we know it's a stable temperature? Check the thermometer. It keeps increasing, increasing, increasing. Once it reaches the th uh, stable point, it remains constant. It remains constant. So that's how we decide, okay, the temperature has come to the stable point. At the stable point, leave it for some time. Don't, don't take it immediately. Leave it for some time. For the temperature to become uniform within the metal ball. Why does it have to be uniform? Look at this calculation we did. We said entire mass of metal balls, we are applying the same delta theta, right? So all the whole mass of that metal ball have to have the same temperature at the beginning. Otherwise, the delta theta will not be same. Out outer surface has different delta theta, inside it has a different delta theta problem. So we need uniform temperature. We need uniform temperature. Clear? So this is how we are going to boil. I'll show you when I do the experiment. The equipment or the apparatus that we are going to use, you can, you can understand. A quantity of lead shots. Two thermometers. Two thermometers. Uh, sometimes they say there is one thermometer from 0 to 100 degree. There is another thermometer from 0 to 50 degree. Then in that case, Use the one 0 to 100 degree in this one. The one with 0 to 50 degree, use it in the calorimeter. In the calorimeter also, you need to have a, a thermometer to measure the temperatures, right? Usually, that doesn't go beyond 50. Suppose if you have one 0 to 50 thermometer, you can use it in the calorimeter. Here, what you use have to have 0 to 100 at least. Water heater. That is if you are using the this one. Uh, the water bath, right? Water heater, tripod. Here what we do, uh, we keep the tripod and we use the Bunsen burner. Bunsen burner. So, water heater or the burner, whichever. A wire gaze and a three beam balance because you need to measure the weight careful. Don't just write balance for the exam. If you just write balance, even the vegetable vendor who has it in the market is a balance. We can't use it for experiments, right? So, don't say weighing scale balance and, and, and answers like that. You don't get marks. You have to say three beam balance. That's how a science student writes the answer. Three beam balance. Or four beam balance. Better accuracy. Or chemical balance. Electronic balance. Write answers like that. Right. Don't, don't write answers. Just balance. Uh, weighing scale. No. You don't get marks for that. Huh? It's an exam. What exam? Physics exam. Remember that. Sufficient water. And a stirrer. These are the materials and apparatus. See the process, how we do it, the method. Measure the mass of calorimeter with stirrer, MC. 
fill up fill up to about centimeter below the top of the calorimeter with cool water and measure the mass. See what that says is if this is the calorimeter fill up to here that means from the top approximately one centimeter below approximately one centimeter below because you are going to drop few metal balls only doesn't take much space so you don't have to leave a lot of space for that right uh, so uh, and don't take too little water if you take too little water what happens when you put the metal balls we have to ensure metal balls are fully covered within the water why if they are exposed to the surrounding if, if they are exposed to the environment they lose heat to the environment as well what we assumed there is no heat loss to the environment we assumed heat loss is zero all the heat uh, released by these metal balls are gained by water and the calorimeter only so the the metal balls have to be complete metal balls or lead shots the lead shots have to be completely submerged completely submerged within the water therefore don't take too little amount of water another thing if the water is of too little quantity when you drop the highly heated lead shots into that the water might sometimes boil half of the water might boil out why the the temperature increment is going to be big right because too little water so little amount of water getting all the heat from the uh, lead shots their temperature might go close to 100 degree water temperature might go to 100 degree part of the water might vaporize which should not happen here right which should not happen because then the mass calculation will be wrong the latent heat and all it comes into play right so that should not happen so don't take too little amount of water also don't fill the water up to the top if you fill up to the top then then when you when you drop the lead shots into that or metal balls into that there's no space the water will spill out even that should not happen so like approximately one centimeter below the top of the uh, uh, calorie meter is the level that we fill water with record the initial temperature of water uh, theta 1 theta 1 will be taken 5 degrees centigrade below the room temperature you would have studied this cooling correction in in uh, uh, the theory parts what's the meaning of cooling correction see assume the room temperature is 30 so water is also going to be at 30 at initially now you put the lead shots into that uh, lead shots into that temperature of water increases let's say it goes up to 40 30 is where we started 40 is where we are finishing the experiment continuously it was increasing what was the environmental temperature room temperature 30 which means throughout the experiment this system had a temperature above the room temperature because it was 30 and above that so throughout the experiment there will be heat loss to the environment well did i say earlier it will be well insulated and there won't be any heat transfer i said that but still however you insulate you can't get 100 percentage insulation however you do it there will be small amount of heat that gets transferred out that is inevitable however you do it, it's very difficult to avoid that so you start at 30 you finish at 40 throughout this the environmental temperature was 30 so the heat is going to be transferred from the system to the environment throughout the experiment whereas we assume there is no heat transfer to the environment so how do we deal with this problem if the room temperature is 30 you don't start the experiment at 30 you start the experiment at 25 25 drop the metal balls let's say it goes to 35 right 25 to 30 when the when the system temperature was increasing what i mean by system here calorie meter stirrer and water system temperature is increasing 25 to 30 the environment was at 30 so within that 5 degrees environment was hotter than the system so you get heat transferred into the system from the environment heat transferred into the system this is 25 to 30 assuming room temperature is 30 then 30 to 35 30 to 35 
Now the system is hotter than the environment. System is hotter than the environment. Therefore, the heat will be transferred out from the system to the environment. Understood? So what happens? Half of the experiment heat is gained from the environment. The next half of the experiment heat is lost to the environment. We can make an assumption. Heat gained from the environment and the heat lost to the environment are equal. So that net loss to the environment, net heat loss to the environment is zero. Understand? How did we achieve that? Compared to the room temperature, you start the experiment approximately 5 degrees below and end it 5 degrees above. Start 5 degrees below and end it 5 degrees above. Or 4 degrees below and 4 degrees above. Equal amount you start lower and by the same amount you end the, end the experiment above. Clear? This is what we call cooling correction. Why do we do this? To minimize the heat loss to the environment. Minimize the net heat loss. Actually, it's a compensation method. What is lost, what is gained, both are going to be approximately equal. Then you can uh, uh, ignore it. Net heat transfer to the environment. Net heat transfer to the environment will be zero. Clear? Right. So that's why we say record the initial temperature of water, which is theta 1. Theta 1 will be taken approximately 5 degrees below the room temperature. Put sufficient amount of substance, lead shots, of which the specific heat capacity is to be found into the tube and heat it with the help of the water heater. I explained you how to heat it. Look at this. This is how the arrangement is. This is the apparatus we have. Right. This is a the thermometer. Can you see there is another tube? You put them in and lock with this tube. Then you heat it. This is where you are going to have, have the burner. Yeah, you heat it. Once the thermometer has come to a stable temperature, leave it for a while, right? Maintain it stable for some time. Then you can just rotate it. The metal balls will fall here. We have kept an insulator here because the burner is here. Your calorimeter is here. So heat might be transferred from the burner to the calorimeter directly. So keep an insulator. Insulator can be regiform, thermocol, huh? regiform, or you can use uh, uh, asbestos sheet a sheet of asbestos, something like that you can uh, use in the middle so that heat from the burner, it doesn't get transferred to calorie meat. Clear? After heating till the water boils, measure, the measure and record the temperature theta 2 of the lead shots when it becomes constant. Can you see? When it becomes constant. Now put the heated lead shots instantly into the water. Instantly. Quickly you have to do it because you don't take too much of time there, right? Here, look at this. This this tube cannot be too lengthy. See, you keep it here and after a couple of meters you have it, you have a huge lengthy tube to drop it there. Wrong. Why? By the time it travels through this tube and it reaches the calorie meter, it would have lost some heat. If you measured 100 degree here, if it goes a long way, by the time it falls into the calorie meter, it might not be 100 degree. It might be 95, which we don't know because we measured the temperature at this point. Therefore, immediately, like quickly transfer it. That's why we keep this tube short. And that's why we brought the calorie meter so close to this, so that it quickly gets transferred. And note down the maximum temperature of theta. What's the meaning of this maximum? When you're dropping these metal balls, the temperature of water will start increasing. Right? We'll keep another thermometer here and we'll check the reading. See, if we started at 25, it goes to 30, 31, 32, likewise it increases. Let's say when it is at 34, you stopped Dropping metal balls into that lead shots, you stopped. When you stopped it, it shows 34. Well, don't take that temperature. Keep stirring it. Keep stirring it. Sometimes the temperature can go up further. Do you know why? Do you know why? Look at this. Sometimes your temperature, uh, your, your thermometer might be here. You have dropped the metal balls here. 
So around the metal balls, temperature might be high. And close to the thermometer, the, the temperature might be low. But it takes some time to, you know, transfer the heat, right? So what do you do? Even after you stop dropping the lead shots, metal balls, keep stirring it, keep stirring it. For a few minutes, keep stirring it. A few seconds at least, like 30 seconds or one minute, keep stirring it. And monitor the temperature. It might further go up. Say at, at 34, if you stopped putting the lead shots into this, it might go to 34.5. A little bit more, it can go up. Then it will remain constant at that point. Then what will happen? It will start falling. It will start falling. Why start falling? Now nobody is giving heat inside, but it will lose heat to the environment. So it will start falling. The maximum temperature that has been recorded is what we have to take as the end temperature. That's what it says here. So it's essential for the exam purposes. If you don't say maximum, you don't get marks. If you say write down the end temperature, final temperature, no marks. Write down the maximum temperature achieved within the calorimeter. Finally, measure the calorimeter with its contents and note down the mass because then only we can find out what is the mass of lead shots that we have dropped in. Then what we can do, we can go back to this equation, metal mass, C mass, delta theta, delta theta, M C C C M W C W into delta theta. This one directly we measured, this one measured, MT will be, MM will be, you got total mass minus MC plus MW. That's the second measurement you got in terms of mass. First you got MC, only the calorimeter and stirrer, then with water, second measurement. Third measurement of mass is total. So the difference between second mass and third mass will be the mass of uh, uh, mass of lead shots. Delta theta will be, look at this, initial temperature of water is theta 1, end temperature of water, the final temperature of water as per this note is theta 3, theta 3. So this will be theta 3 minus theta 1. Theta 2 must be the temperature of uh, lead shots. So they were at theta 2. Theta 3 is the equilibrium temperature. From theta 2 they come down to theta 3. So that is the drop in their temperature. Right. Cc we take from theoretical value and drop it. Apply it. Cw also the theoretical value we apply. Solve this we can find Cm. Clear. This is what we are going to do in this experiment. So, again, let me take all these apparatus, explain once again with the apparatus. So, th this is the important part. Now, everyone knows, okay, you are going to heat the lead shots, put it and measure the temperatures. But, but, why we are doing that, how we are doing that, what errors can come there, this is what you have to be clear about. Right, everyone knows the experiment. But not everyone gets full marks for these questions in the exam, right? Particularly structure type questions, structured essay type questions. Because they ask part by part, why do you do this? Why do you do this? Why do we heat like this? Why don't we heat it in the bathtub? If they ask questions like that, right? In the, in the water bath, they ask questions like that. So like unless otherwise you had been listening and you had, you had been taking down of all the important points I'm telling you, you can't score well in the exam. Well, you might gain some knowledge. But each minute point I'm telling, please make sure you take down and keep it. When I'm doing the experiment, again, I'm going to explain it. Well, try to well understand this and be good at it. Right? Shall we see how to do the experiment now? So the apparatus you need to do this experiment. This is the boiling tube. Boiling tube. I'll show you how to use this boiling tube. We'll be using this to heat the lead shots. Right? And the Bunsen burner, a tripod and a wire gaze or wire mess. 
This is the three beam balance, three beam balance, and an insulated calorimeter, insulated calorimeter because we want to ensure there is no heat loss to the environment or heat gain from the environment. So we have insulated it. Also, we are keeping it on top of an insulator, right? So that any heat conduction to the uh, table is uh, is prohibited or it, it's it's prevented. We are going to find the specific heat capacity of these uh, lead shots. You need to have two thermometers, one to measure the temperature of lead shots and the other one to measure the temperature of water within the calorimeter. Sufficient amount of water. And you need another insulator because when we get the heated, heated lead shots from the tube, you have to bring it close to the burner. So sometimes the heat might be transferred to the calorimeter. So what we do, we keep an insulator in between so that the heat from the burner is not transferred to the calorimeter. Right. This is all the instruments we use here. First, we will let, let's, let's get familiarized with this boiling tube and see how to use this to heat the, uh, uh, the lead shots. Students, you can see how this boiling tube works. We have filled this with water. So there is water inside this. How did we fill? We opened this. Through this, we have filled water into this. Right? We, we use this opening to fill water into the boiling tube. Then, you can see we have another opening here with a closure like this. In this opening only, we are going to put the lead shots in. So what will happen? The lead shots will not get in touch with or it will not uh, uh, touch the water with this, which is inside. What's the reason? When we get heated lead shots out from this, we want only the lead shots. There should not be any heated water. The reason is this. The assumption we make all the heat lost by the lead shots will be gained by the water inside this and the calorimeter. So suppose when you are taking the lead shots from this, if it is wet, if it has hot water around it, then that water is also going to lose heat which will have interruptions in our calculations. So when the water boils inside, we have a separate tube inside. It goes through this way and it exits from this way. So when you put the lead shots here, the ferrous balls here, they will not touch the water. But when you keep it for a long time, the temperature of water and the temperature of uh, uh, the lead shots will become quite close. So we will keep a thermometer also inside here to measure the temperature of uh, lead shots. How do we get the lead shots out? I'll show you. You can see here. You can see here. See, this is what the closure for this opening is. So what will happen? Suppose if I take this out, you can see. If I put the lead shots here, that will come out from this end, you can see. Can you see? The lead shots I put here, they come out from this end. That means there is a complete copper line starting from here, it goes all the way here, which is surrounded by water. So when I heat, when I heat, the water will get heated. See? This doesn't get in touch with water, it has a separate line coming for it. So what do we do when we keep this, see when I keep this uh, cap of this or this tube, let me just keep it like this and when it goes to, uh, goes to the deep, when you rotate like this, you can see at, at one point it goes in and gets fixed. Once more see, I just keep it like this, it is not yet locked, you rotate, it locks in. When it locks in, what happens? See, when I put the seal balls now, they don't come out because it has locked it. Once again, see? So this is how we keep it. Right? We have locked the hall. We keep all these uh, lead shots in. We heat it. When we get it to the right temperature, how do I get it out of it? You just rotate this. See, when I rotate this, watch, watch this end carefully. I'm going to rotate this. When I rotate this, the lead shots will come out from this end. Can you see? Shall we try once again? See? Okay, I keep it 
lock it okay it's locked now put the uh, uh, lead shots okay they remain inside keeping it like this we are going to heat it right when we when we heat it to say 100 degree if 100 degree is what we want heat it to 100 degree now you want to get these steel balls out or lead shots out what do you do just rotate this when you rotate the the lock will open you open it slowly then you can get little by little see one one by one you can get when you get enough you can again lock it you don't have to get all of them out when you get enough amount of lead shots again lock it this is how we use this boiling tube so first time what i'm going to do let me fill this with sufficient amount of lead shots and let it get heated usually we let it heat until 100 degree while that is getting heated let me do the other measurement let me take other measurements and uh, the rest of the practical let me fill this with the lead shots we need to keep a thermometer also so let's keep a thermometer and because if you fill this with lead shots then you won't be able to keep the thermometer in make sure you keep the thermometer halfway through so you you may get a doubt now why do we have to use small lead shots why can't we use a big cube of solid there are a couple of reasons one the amount of water we are going to use is less so in a small amount of water if you put a sizable cube of solid the heat it gives to the water might be huge then what might happen the water might get evaporated also sometimes it might get vaporized we don't want that to happen what we are planning to do we want the water temperature to increase by approximately 10 degree. I say we start at 25 degree, by 35 degree we want to end the experiment. That's why we have small lead shots, so one by one or little by little you can add the lead shots until you reach the right temperature and you can stop the experiment. Point number one. Point number two, when you heat these lead shots, right, these are too small, you can see that it's too small. When you heat these lead shots, what we measure with this thermometer is the outside temperature of these lead shots. But how do we know the temperature is even throughout the lead shot? Since it is too small, since the size is too small, it's fair to assume the temperature within the particular uh, steel ball or iron ball will be the same. Suppose if we use a bigger sized cube, then when you are heating it, the temperature on its surface, temperature inside the cube can be different. So you measure the temperature outside and you assume that is the temperature of whole cube or whole solid which can be an invalid assumption. These are the two reasons why we have selected small part particles of or small parts of this solid. Ideally uh, spherical shaped lead shots in, in small size. put sufficient amount of lead shots and heat it we wouldn't we wouldn't know how many lead shots we will need so let's put as much as possible and we'll heat them and there is another question they often ask when we when we heat it we often heat it to 100 degrees 100 degrees so why do we prefer 100 degree why can't we stop it at 80 degree you know what we have inside is water when the water is heated up to 100 degree water's temperature will keep rising so suppose you stop at 80 degree you wouldn't know whether 80 is stable or not sometimes it might be on its growth path the temperature is rising it's somewhere in the middle of 80 now so in another second it might go to 81 82 degrees but if it reaches 100 degree, you know, boiling point of water is 100 degree. So at 100 degree, it stabilizes. You can leave it for a few minutes. It will get stabilized at 100 degree. 
So to get a stabilized temperature, we prefer 100 degree. Otherwise, actually any heat is okay. But you are not sure. Sometimes it might show 80 in the, in the thermometer. But it might be increasing. After you take the steel balls within next couple of seconds, it might be like 81, 82 degrees, which can be an error in your calculation later. Because of that, we will be heating it until 100 degrees. We have space for another couple of lead shots. Let's fill it as much as we can. Right, so we have filled it with lead shots. What do we do now? I already have filled it with water. Let's keep it here. And we are going to heat it. Another question, why do we have this outlet? You can see here, there is an, there is an, uh, there is an exhaust valve here. Why do we have this outlet when you boil the water, if it reaches 100 degree, water will change into steam. When it is steam, it needs more space because it expands. Water, when it changes the state into steam, it expands. It needs more space, right? Then the pressure will increase. To avoid all that, we have this exit so that the steam can go out. Steam can go out, right? That's the purpose of this outlet in case if you want to know. Now what we will do, we will uh, start on the burner, let's heat it until it reaches a stable temperature which is usually 100 degrees. Now you can see I have started the Bunsen burner so that the, the uh, water inside is getting heated. Through that the, the lead shots also will be heated. In the meantime, I have taken the calorie meter and the stirrer, you can see calorie meter and the stirrer separately. And I'm going to get the weight of this because why do I need the weight of this? The heat lost by the lead shots will be gained by calorie meter stirrer and water. So I have to write MC theta, MC delta theta for calorie meter and stirrer as well. Make sure you keep stirrer also inside because when you add these lead shots, you will be mixing with the stirrer, which means stirrer is also getting heat. It is also gaining some heat. Yes, so make sure when you do the calculations, you include the calorie meter and the stirrer. Ideally, both have to be of the same material. We are using copper calorie meter and the stirrer. Suppose you have different materials, then you have to find the weights separately and do calculations separately. Since I have both in copper, I can put them together and get the weight and do the calculations. So first what we will do, let's use this three beam weighing scale and find the weight of this calorie meter and Stirrer. First, let's check 100 by 100. Make it to 100. No, it's less than 100. You can see that it's less than 100. Now increase 10 by 10. Make it 10. It's more than 10. Make it 20. It's more than 20. 30. More than 30. Ah, when you make it to 40, on this side, it's it's heavier which means this is greater than 30, but less than 40. Bring it back to 30. Now let's change one by one. You started with 100 by 100, you found in which 100 it is, then 10 by 10 to find in which 10 it is. Now we know it's in between 30 and 40. Let's go one by one now. 31, more, 32, more than that. 33, there's a small change, but still it's more than that. Ah, see, when I take it to 34, this side is heavier, which means it has to be in between 33 and 34. You have to wait until this, this side stabilizes. The arrow should be exactly at zero. Yeah, the reading we get is 33.5 grams. This is in grams. So, calorie meter and stirrer together, the weight is 33.5 grams. Let's write these readings on a table so that you can do the calculation at the end. Let's write the reading. Uh, the, the mass of calorie meter and stirrer, 33.5 grams. 
The weight of calorimeter and stirrer we got is 33.5 grams. Let's write it down. MC 33.5 grams. What next we have to do? Let's fill this with sufficient amount of water and get the weight of MC plus MW. Now what we are going to do, as I mentioned earlier, we are going to fill this with water, right? Uh, usually we use uh, chilled water. The reason is this. Suppose if room temperature is 28, we usually start with like 5 or 6 degrees below the room temperature. See, if room temperature is 28, you start at 23. Then add the lead shots until you reach a temperature approximately 5 degrees above the room temperature. Come again, if room temperature is 28 degree, we start the experiment at 23 and we end the experiment at 33. Why do we do this? When the calorimeter and water are having a temperature less than the room temperature, however insulated we have, a small amount of heat will be transferred from the environment to the system. So this calorimeter and water will be gaining at least a small amount of heat from the environment even though after all the insulation we have done. Similarly, when it goes exceeding the room temperature, an amount of heat is going to be transferred from the system, from the calorimeter and water to the environment. So when we start at 23, suppose if room temperature is 28, if we start at 23 until 28, from 23 to 28, the system will be gaining heat from the environment. From 28 to 33 degree, system will be releasing heat to the environment because it will be more, it will be having higher temperature than the environment. So initial 5 degrees, it gains heat. The next 5 degrees, it releases heat and we can make an assumption that the heat gained and heat released to the environment are equal because the temperature difference is same, 5 degree, 5 degree. So we are not preventing the heat transfer to and from the environment. We have prevented it to a certain extent, but we are not 100% preventing it. Then what do we do? We, we take an assumption, we take an adjustment actually, heat transferred to the environment, he transferred from the environment, both will be approximately equal. So it nullifies the effect. That's what we are going to do. That's why I have taken cool water, which will be, which will be below the room temperature. We'll check the temperature of that just before adding the uh, lead shots. Yes. Now what we'll do, we are going to fill this calorimeter approximately to one centimeter below the brim of it. Why? We need to have enough space to add these uh, steel balls as well, the lead shots as well. If we have too little amount of water, what will happen when you add the lead shots? One thing, the lead shots will not be fully covered by the water. If it is not fully covered by the water, if the lead shots are exposed to the environment, then lead shots will be losing some heat to the environment. But you are taking an assumption, the heat lost by the lead shots and the heat gained by water and the calorimeter are equal. So what will happen if, heat, if, if, the, if the lead shots are losing heat to the environment also? That will mean error in the experiment. So you need to have sufficient amount of water to cover all these lead shots fully. Second thing, if you have too little amount of water, when you pass the lead shots into the water, because of high temperature, they might get evaporated. So don't have too little amount of water, have sufficient amount of water. Usually we take in the calorimeter, calorimeter approximately one centimeter below its capacity. So let's fill it to one centimeter below its capacity and measure the weight of calorimeter, uh, stirrer and water. Make sure when you are measuring the weight, sometimes if the room temperature, uh, if, the, if the temperature of the water is uh, too low, you might get mist around this, right? Then the weight will be uh, different because you are going to get the weight of the water around this as well. So make sure you don't have anything like this. The surface is still shiny. If not, you have to wipe it. You have to wipe it and get it. But here it's still shiny. There's no mist around it. I can get the weight of this.
let's bring all this back to zero. Check 100 by 100. See, when I keep it at 100, it's, it's heavier, which means it has to be below 100. Let's take it back to zero. Let's change these tens and see. It's more than 50, more than 70, more than 80, more than 90. But obviously, it's less than 100. So let's keep it at 90 and then increase the ones. More than 93, more than 95, it's more than 96, but less than 97. You can see it's less than 97, so it's in between 96 and 97. Let me adjust it. Right, we get 96.2 grams, 96.2 grams. What is this? The weight of water, calorie meter uh, and the uh, uh, stirrer, calorie meter, stirrer and water all together, it's 96.2 grams. Let's write this down also in our table. The weight of calorie meter, stirrer with water, we got 96.2 grams, MC plus MW is 96.2 grams. Now what next we do? Let's wait until the uh, uh, iron balls get heated to 100 degree. Then we'll add the iron balls into the water and get the uh, temperature. What should be the initial temperature of water? 5 degrees below the room temperature. So now let's find the room temperature and mark the theta 1 starting temperature of water. We'll mark it here. Let's check how much it is. Now you can see I have kept the calorie meter with water within, within an insulated calorie meter which is bigger than that, right? Let's measure the room temperature and as I, st as I stated earlier, let's start the experiment approximately 5 or 6 degrees below the room temperature and finish it above room temperature by 5 or 6 degrees. First let's check the room temperature. Students, uh, I can see the room temperature is 27 degrees, 27 degrees. So let's start the experiment 5 degrees below uh, the room temperature. So let me fix it. Let's fix the thermometer. As I already mentioned, what we have here is cool water. So I expect the uh, temperature to be less than 27. Let's check how much it is. I can see 22 degrees. Usually we keep it for a while and check whether it remains at 22. Sometimes what will happen, it might be changing. It might be going up or going down sometimes. So just wait for a few seconds and see whether it remains at 22. Yes, it remains at 22 itself. It remains at 22 itself. Yes. So we can take the initial temperature of water to be 22 degrees. Right? Later we will write after getting all the temperatures, we will write that down. It's 22 degrees. Meanwhile, now I kept this to boil, the boiling tube. And I can see the steam started coming out from here. You can see the steam started coming out of it, which means the water has boiled. Yes. Let's check the temperature. So you can see here, 
the temperature here is at 101 degree 101 degree and it is remaining constant at that point last few seconds last few minutes it was remaining constant at 101 degree so i can assume the the uh, lead shots within this are at 101 degrees right now right now what do we do let's add these lead shots to the water and uh, keep stirring it till what point we are going to add the lead shots until the temperature raises by see we started at 22 room temperature was 27 5 degrees below we have to do it until it becomes 32 degree approximately 32 degree right so let's see how we are how we are going to do that let me use this let me use this insulator in between when i am bringing it closer the heat from the burner should not be transferred to this water and the color emitter even though we have insulated better to use another insulator so let me use this sheet here uh, to prevent heat transfer from the burner to the system right i have brought it closer now i have kept another insulator in between now let's transfer the lead shots from the boiling tube to the water slowly make sure when you transfer the boiling tube you uh, transfer the lead shots from the boiling tube you should not have too much gap in between the boiling tube and the water because then when the lead shots tra travel through the environment they will be losing heat so quickly you have to, within short distance you have to transfer them point number one Point number two, when you drop them in, make sure the water doesn't spill out because we have already taken the weight of this water. So now if the water spills out of the color emitter, that is an error. Slowly, let's transfer it. Maybe we can, we can take the thermometer a little up and fix it again later. Let's drop some lead shots into this now. Let's mix these and see if the temperature rise is not enough, then we can uh, add more. So let me bring down this further. I can see the temperature rises now it's at 24 degrees we started at 22 now it is at 24 degrees it's stabilized at 24 let's add some more uh, lead shots into this Let's see how much it rises to the temperature now. I can see it's rising passing 26 degree, it has passed 26. It's almost at 27 degrees, it's almost at 27 degrees. We wanted to take it up to 32 degrees, yes. Let's add more steel balls or more, more lead shots.
it's it's increasing it has passed 29 ideally if we can get around 32 degrees it's good you can see now the temperature has increased to 32 degree 32 degree right we wanted to increase this to 32 degrees otherwise we should have added more lead shots until it comes up to 32 degree but now it has come to 32 degree right so we started at 22 where room temperature was 27 which was 5 degree less from the room temperature we started now we have reached a temperature above the room temperature by 5 degrees now we are at 32 degrees we can stop adding the lead shots to this what we can do take this calorimeter with water and the lead shots in it now find the total weight of that if we subtract the weight now and the weight that we measured last 96.2 gram if you subtract that the additional weight we have now will be the weight of or the mass of uh, uh, lead shots or the the ferrous mass iron mass that we have added to this system shall we get the weight now so as i mentioned now we have the calorimeter stirrer water and the uh, iron balls or the lead shots we have added to that let's get the weight of them all together let's bring everything to zero back increase 100 by 100 it's more than 100 it's less than 200 so keep it at 100 10 by 10 more than 30 more than 50 more than 70 but less than 80 so let's keep it at 70 let's increase one by one now more than 74 more than 75 also but less than 76 it is 175.2 grams 175.2 grams is the weight we are getting now so we can write this down and uh, uh, we can see the calculations what calculation we are going to do the heat lost by the lead shots is the heat gained by water the calorimeter and stir water and calorimeter were initially at 22 degrees and they have come up to 32 degrees so they gain 10 degrees extra whereas the uh, lead shots were at 101 degree they have come down to 32 degree when it was at heat equilibrium it was at 32 degree from 101 to 32 when they came down the the heat they lost the heat that they emitted was gained by the water and uh, the calorimeter plus stirrer let's do this calculation after writing this weight also the initial temperature of water and calorimeter was 22 degrees centigrade theta 2 theta 2 is the temperature of uh, the iron balls when we added them to the water which was at 101 degrees 101 degrees and theta 3 is the end temperature of water and uh, uh, calorimeter which is 32 degrees centigrade 32 The total weight we have got is 175.2 grams let's write it here m total total mass good now we can take all these measurements do the calculations as i explained already and see what is the specific heat capacity of these metal balls that we have used right now the readings we have got i have uh, uh, shown in the table here mc is uh, calorimeters and stirrers mass mc plus mw so you can subtract and find the mass of water which will be if it is 34 62.7 is it 1257532 similarly total mass is here if you subtract mc plus mw you can find 
mm that metals mass which is 79 grams correct 2 2 5 6 15 6 9 79 theta 122 theta 201 we need theta 3 minus theta 1 as well as theta 2 minus theta 3. This is the temperature change for the metal balls, the lead shots, which is uh, 69 degrees. And water's temperature change is 10 degrees, 22 to 32. Correct? Right. Now we can write mm. Cm delta theta or theta 2 minus theta 3 Mc Cc Mw Cw into theta 3 minus theta 1 right mm 79 gram actually you don't necessarily have to convert into kilogram because you have m in all the terms if you substitute all of them in grams then no problem but still i suggest have this habit of converting all the grams into kilograms because some of the questions, they don't give the specific heat capacity. Straight away, they give you the heat capacity. Which means MC calculated all together, they give it. For the calorimeter. So, only this one MC will be available. Others, it will be mass given separately. In that case, unless you convert that to kilogram, you will get wrong answers. Therefore, it's safe to always convert to kilograms and do the calculations. Understand? CM is what I have to find. Theta 2 minus theta 3 is 69. This is the heat released by the metal balls. MCCC, MC 33.5 grams, convert that to kilograms. CC, this is calorimeter, which is copper, let's say 400. MW, MW is 62.7 convert to kilogram into CW 4200 multiplied by theta 3 minus theta 1 it's 10 degree 10 degree clear You can cancel these thousands. You have 79 into 69 cm. 79 into 69 cm. Let's say if, if I multiply 69, 79, 81, 63, 8, 71. 54, 67, 42, 5, 47. 1545 5451 five, 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 cm equals equals right uh, 33.5 into 400 actually 4000 right so that is uh, if i multiply by 400 there are two zeros 4, 5, 22, 4, 3, 12, plus 2, 14, 13,200, correct? 4, 5, 2, 12, 14, 14, 14, 13, 14, 13, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, Double zero. And there is another 10 outside which also I'll put here. 62.7 in the 4200. So that's like 
25. So if you add it together, 0, 4, 3, 3, 2, 6 with this 0. So CM is going to be 400, 4 plus 3, 7, 7, and then 3 plus 3, 6. Five four five what? If you divide this carefully, if you divide this carefully, the answer you get, you get approximately five hundred and eight joules kilogram Kelvin. Five hundred and eight joules per kilograms per Kelvin is the answer we are getting as the, the, the specific heat capacity of the metal that we have used. See, in the exam what you get as calculations will not be this complicated. This is a practical experiment. So, answers we get may not be the rounded proper answers. In the exam also you get this calculation, but they will give numbers which are very easy to solve, not like 69, 79, 62.7. No, they will give comfortable figures, right? So, don't worry too much about calculation. Here we get 508, I think 507.7, which is approximately 508 joules per kilograms per Kelvin is the answer we are getting. Clear? So, do you understand now? Calculation is quite simple, straightforward, right? Heat lost is equal to heat gained. Who gains the heat? Calorimeter, stirrer and the water. Who loses the heat? The lead shots or metal balls, right? Now, it's time for us to take past paper questions and see what kind of questions have come on this. Shall we check? The past paper questions on this experiment, 1991, very old one, no? You would have not even born by then. It's, it's like 31 years back, very old one. Old papers have very good questions, right? These experiments never expire. Right, it's always like physics, these basic experiments, don't come and say, say 91 paper is too old, no, do we still have to use it? Yes, because experiment is same, nothing has changed in from 1950s so far, right? So, you can always say, some experiments they have taken out of the syllabus, they make it, make your life easier. So, don't take the questions which are completely out of syllabus and do it, but these experiments, it's always in the syllabus, any paper, any old paper, you can take and do it. Good questions you can find, yes. Method of mixtures is used in a laboratory to find the specific heat capacity of lead in small shapes. Calorimeter is one of the main apparatus used in this experiment. Prepare the list of other important apparatus used in this experiment. Very simple, very straightforward. What are the other apparatus? We need thermometers we need weighing scale don't just write it as weighing scale say three beam balance or four beam balance or chemical balance however then we need the boiling tube and water tub Then we need a Bunsen burner. We need a tripod and wire mesh. We keep a wire mesh so that the heat is even. Yeah. 
the stirrer stirrer is missing very important stirrer i think that's all yeah next state the methods of heat loss in this calorimeter from this calorimeter what are the methods of uh, heat transfer there are three methods what are they conduction convection radiation next one briefly explain the measures used to minimize heat loss due to the above mentioned methods so each of these methods how we minimize the heat loss let's see one by one first one we wrote conduction right conduction from the calorimeter from the calorimeter if the heat gets lost to the environment by conduction how do we prevent it we insulate it right insulate the calorimeter or lag the calorimeter you can say lag the calorimeter you can take a regiform or you can take sponge just wrap it in the bottom also you keep a regiform piece which are thermal insulators then the conduction can be minimized convection how do we prevent convection you close the calorimeter with a lid right there are lids with a uh, hall to keep the thermometer a hall to keep the stirrer so take a proper lid and close it close the calorimeter with a lid third one radiation how do you prevent radiation make the surface shiny from the shiny surface radiation is less make the calorimeter surface polished or shiny right this is how you you min, uh, prevent or you minimize heat loss to the environment from each of these methods what is the main reason for selecting a stable temperature such as the boiling point of water as the initial temperature of lead shots i explained this earlier why do we bring it to 100 degree and maintain it at 100 degree so that the the lead shots surface and the inner core of it inner part of it become at the same temperature if it is a rising temperature outside might show one temperature inside the lead shots it will be a different temperature so let's say that by maintaining a stable temperature for a while the temperature within the lead shots can be made uniform uniform the temperature within the uh, lead shots will be uniform everywhere it will have the same temperature state the precautionary measures you can take when transferring the lead shots to the calorimeter i already told you you have to transfer it quickly after heating the lead shots quickly you have to transfer it quickly there shouldn't be not much of time delay the 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 tube should not be too lengthy because otherwise uh, the heat loss to the environment will be high and another thing 
when you drop those lead shots when you drop those lead shots into the water make sure the water doesn't spill out because you already measured the mass of that water with the previously measured mass only you're going to do the calculations so after measuring the mass if the drop of, if, the, if the water spills out then that is an error let's say transfer instantaneously or transfer quickly quickly without spilling water from calorimeter without spilling water from calorie meter. The next one, how would the final temperature of the mixture get affected if large lead pieces are used instead of lead shots? Explain your answer. Why did we use small lead shots? Why not the big ones? Why not big large uh, blocks of lead? Couple of things. One, when you put large one, the temperature within that lead shot, internal temperature of that lead shot and the surface temperature might not become equal quickly. It takes a long time for it to become equal. So it's, it's difficult for us to ensure whether the lead shot has come to a uniform temperature. Point number one. Point number two, sometimes when you use large lead shots, the, the time it takes for equilibrium will be high. Why? The temperature, the heat from the center, first it has to travel and come to the surface and then it has to go to the water. So, if it is small lead shots, the surface area is high, it quickly gets transferred. But big ones, compared to the mass, its surface area is less. So, com compared to the heat content, its surface area will be less. Now, you may, you may argue, no, big ones has bigger, bigger surface area. Compared to the mass of small one and the big one, mass ratio and the surface area ratio, for the big one, surface area ratio is less. So, it takes longer time to come to an equilibrium with the water. Longer time to come to an equilibrium means for a, it, it takes longer time for the practical heat loss to the environment will be high. Even though we have insulated, we have taken precautionary measures, there will be some amount of heat loss. So we have to anyway finish the practical, we have to finish the experiment as quick as possible. When you take longer time, there is going to be more loss to the environment, more heat loss to the environment. Another issue, if you are using big ones, the temperature increment can be rapid. Why? If it's big one, it, it contains more heat. So once you drop that into the water, the, the temperature of water might increase rapidly, significantly. Clear? So these are the problems we have. We can write one of it. We can say it will take longer time to reach thermal equilibrium resulting in resulting in more heat loss to the environment to the environment Every time when you talk about heat loss, make sure you mention heat loss to whom, heat loss to where, heat loss to the environment. Another reason you can see, difficult to ensure uniform temperature within the Lead blocks. Next.
Cooling correction is essential when method of mixtures is used to find the specific heat capacity of an insulator material such as rubber. Explain why. Same reason. Insulator material like rubber or rare conductors like rubber, they will take a long time to release the heat to water and achieve a heat equi thermal equilibrium. It is going to take a long time. A long time means loss to the environment is high. Heat loss to the environment is high. We won't be able to neglect it. In that case, cooling correction is so important. What is cooling correction? Starting 5 degrees below the room temperature, ending 5 degrees above the room temperature is, is essential. It's important. It's very important. We'll say it will take longer to reach thermal equilibrium leading to increased level of increased level of heat loss to the environment to minimize this effect minimize this cooling correction cooling correction is important cooling correction is important clear cooling correction is important right so that's one of the very old questions very old questions but quite basic ones there is nothing complicated quite a basic one now we'll see another question another one 2002 20 years back it has come a little bit modified question it is see the question we did now 1991 that was directly as same as what we did in the experiment. Now this one, they make some modification. We'll see what it is. You are provided with metal nails, M, the head of which are covered by plastic material, P, as shown in the diagram. So this is metal. And on top of that, there is some plastic. The head is covered by plastic. The specific heat capacity of plastic, Cp, has to be found using method of mixtures without removing the plastic part. Okay, you should not remove it and take it separate. You want to keep it as it is and find the specific heat capacity. The quantity of plastic in each nail is 30% of total mass. Right. So out of the total mass, 30% is plastic, 70% is metal. The specific heat capacity of metal is, is a known quantity. Cm is a known figure. We know Cm. Good. Now, if you are given nails at 100 degrees centigrade, calorimeter and water, what are the other apparatus required to complete this experiment? Assume that plastic can be heated to 100 degrees centigrade without affecting its, its properties. So, assume that, that it will not get uh, affected. So we don't need the Bunsen burner, tripod and stuff because it's already heated to 100 degree. They are giving you the heat at 100 degree centigrade nails. What else do we need? We need 3 beam balance. 3 beam balance. 3 beam balance is required. Have they given the stirrer? No. Stirrer is required. That's all, right? Three beam balance, calorimeter, stirrer, nails. That's all. Three beam balance and nails, uh, stirrer. Yes, that's all. Next. Prepare the list of measurements that you will take in this experiment. The list must be prepared in the order you will take the measurements. Use the given notations. Okay, in the order that we take the measurements. M1. Mass of calorimeter with stirrer. M2 
mass of calorimeter stirrer and water water theta 1 after that we take the initial temperature of water right initial temperature of water theta 2 theta 2 has to be the maximum temperature of water Don't say final temperature, say maximum temperature of water. If at all, we can add something. If you have space, you can add uh, maximum temperature of water after adding the lead shots or nails in this case. It's not lead shots after adding the nails. M3 is the final measurement, right? Calorimeter and, and its contents. The mass of calorimeter and its contents. Difficult to say stir uh, water and uh, uh, the nails. Simply you can say calorimeter and contents. Write down the expression that shows the relationship among CP, CM, CW, specific heat capacity of water. CP was plastic, CM was the specific heat capacity of that metal, CW is specific heat capacity of water and the other measurements in B, B means what we have written now, write down the expression, okay, that shows the relationship. Assume that the calorimeter and the metal part of the nails are made by the same material. Right, see, who and who are going to release the heat here? The nail, nail has plastic, nail has metal, those two are going to release the heat. Who is going to gain that heat? Calorimeter, stirrer and water. Simple, we will write that. Have they given uh, the mass of, uh, so M3 is the final mass, M2 is before adding the nails. So, M3 minus M2 must be the mass of nails. M3 minus M2 is the mass of nails. Of this 70 percentage, 70 percentage is metal. 70 percentage is metal. Metal CM. It was originally 100 final equilibrium theta 2. This is the amount of heat released by the metal part metal part in the nail. Now, the plastic part in the nail, 30 percentage into CP is a specific heat capacity. That was also 100 equilibrium theta 2. Right? You can actually take M3 minus M2, 100 minus theta 2. You can take common and write it. No problem. Right? I have just written the Detailed way equals equals M2 minus M1 that is the mass of water CW theta 2 minus theta 1 plus M1 uh, again CM they said the metal of uh, uh, calorimeter and the nail, metal part of the nail are of the same material, CM 100 minus, not 100, theta 2 minus theta 1. You can leave it like this, but if you like to simplify, we can do this. See here, 70 by 100 CM and 30 by 100 CP into M3 minus M2 is common, 100 minus theta 2 is also common. If you take the common things out, then here 
theta 2 minus theta 1 is common. M2 minus M1 CW, M1 CM into theta 2 minus theta 1. So, not much of a simplification. You could have left it like this itself or else you can write like this. Whichever you will get marks. Huh? You don't necessarily have to do this with the first line itself, you will get the marks. Next, state a main error that can affect the results of this experiment other than the errors related to the above measurement. When you are taking the measurement, there, will, there can be errors, right? Measurement errors. See, if the, if the uh, uh, weighing scale, the 3 beam balance, maximum, uh, the minimum measurement you can get is 0.1 gram. Anything below that you cannot measure. So, that can give you an error. Yeah, like that. There can be errors related to the measurements. They are not asking that. Apart from that, what are the experimental errors you can get? There will be a lot. When you are transferring the, he uh, the, the heated nails, hot nails to the water, if it is exposed to the environment, some heat will be lost to the environment. When you are dropping the nails into the water or into the calorimeter, water might spill out of the calorimeter. When you are, when you are dropping these into the calorimeter, there might not be sufficient water to cover that fully. So that it gets exposed to the environment and heat loss to the environment. Likewise, lot of possible experimental errors are here. They asked only one, only one. So let's say heat loss can happen when nails are transferred. When the nails are transferred, heat loss, heat loss to the environment. Now, let's say heat loss to the environment. Don't ever just say heat loss. Every time you have to say heat loss to whom? Because heat loss from the nail to water is okay. That is what we want it to happen. So, if you simply say heat loss, which is not a valid statement. What we want to happen, heat loss from nail to water. What we don't want to happen, heat loss from nail to the environment, right. So, when you say error, if you say heat loss, no marks. If you say heat loss to the environment, yes, you get marks, clear. Heat loss to the environment can happen when nails are transferred. Mention an appropriate measure to minimize the error you mentioned in D. So, how do we minimize this? Transfer it quickly. Nothing else we can do, yeah. So, transfer quickly, transfer quickly. Careful, here the answer here has to be based on what, what answer you have given to the previous one. In the previous one, if you said the nails can be exposed to the environment, if there is insufficient water, then here you have to say use sufficient amount of water. Here, previous one you said water might spill out when we are dropping the nails. Now you have to say drop the nails carefully such that water does not spill out. So, whichever the error you highlight in D, the solution has to come in E. Next, can we expect more precise value for CP if relatively more numbers of nails and less water are used in this experiment? If we use little amount of water and more nails, can we expect a good outcome? No. Several reasons. Reason number one, the water might, might not be enough to cover the nail fully. Then heat loss to the environment will happen. If the nail is exposed to the air, it's going to lose air to the air. It, it's, it's going to lose the heat to the air. Then the assumption all the heat lost by the nail has been gained by the water and calorimeter will be invalid. Second problem, the temperature of water will increase rapidly. Rapid increase in temperature, there will be some problems. What problems? One, some vaporization might happen. Two, the temperature difference between the environment and the water will be high, resulting in more loss to the environment. All this will happen. Give the reason for your answer. So, we will say no. Water 
will not be sufficient to submerge to submerge the nails fully leading to heat loss to the environment that is one problem another problem i can say are uh, the increase in temperature will be high resulting in higher temperature difference temperature difference with surroundings surroundings and thereby more heat loss more heat loss right so check the space if you have space you can write two answers they didn't mention how many they said give the reason so even if you have given one reason you get the marks next get a valid reason as to why the value of 4 cp obtained in this experiment is precise than using a large plastic block instead of nails we had the same question in the previous one also when you like here what we do we take a nail on top of the nail there is this plastic rather than that if we simply took a plastic block only and did this experiment can we get a better answer no the reason is here by putting the plastic as a cap of the nail the surface area of the plastic has been increased so it loses heat faster relatively faster if you are using just a glass block only relatively the mass versus surface area ratio will be less it will have less surface area right then the heat loss to the water will be slow to reach the equilibrium it takes more time more time means more heat loss then the answer will not be precise so let's say uh when a plastic block is used it will take longer to reach equilibrium thermal equilibrium longer to reach thermal equilibrium therefore heat loss to the environment will increase and the value obtained for cp will not be precise will not be precise clear right that's about 2002 paper again even though it has some modification it look like a new thing nothing much complicated there there just the normal practical normal experiment we have done they added another component there a plastic piece and they have asked you a question now another one we'll see 2007 not so close one that is also 15 years back we'll see you are asked to design and perform an experiment in the school laboratory to de determine the specific heat capacity of a metal using the method of mixtures water a thermal 
a thermally insulated calorimeter with a stirrer, a thermometer and small metal balls heated to 100 degree are provided. What is the other instrument you need in this experiment? What is the other one? You need, you need weighing scale, three beam balance. Three beam balance you can see, four beam balance you can see or chemical balance you can see. What is the advantage of using thermally insulated uh, calorimeter? The heat loss to the environment can be minimized. Simple questions, very straightforward. Heat loss to the environment can be minimized. Can be minimized. List the measurements you will obtain in the experiment in order to in order that you perform the experiment. Okay. Five measurements you remember. First one. Mass of calorimeter, calorimeter and stirrer. Mass of calorimeter, stirrer and water. Initial temperature of water. After this, we usually write the temperature of metal balls, but here they have given it. They said it's at 100 degree. We don't have to measure it. Then what? Maximum temperature. Make sure you mention maximum. Huh? Don't say final temperature. Maximum temperature of water after adding the uh, metal balls. After adding the metal balls. Final mass of Calorimeter with its contents. Right, that's all the measurements we take, you know. But the thing is, you are given this order. If you don't give in this order, if you have given different order, you might not get the marks. You might not get the marks. You will not get the marks. The amount of water used in this experiment should not be too small or too large. Give a reason as to why it should not be too small because it won't be enough to cover or submerge the metal balls. Why shouldn't it be too large? One, it might spill out. Two, when you drop the metal balls inside, the increase in temperature might be too small. If you take a lot of water, then the increase in temperature will be very low. What is the problem with that? Percentage error will be big. See, the thermometer we have it measures 1 degree by 1 degree or sometimes 0.5 by 0.5. When I measure 10 degrees difference, I can have an error of 0 0.5. 0 0.5 out of 10 is like 5 percentage. Imagine I used a lot of water and the, and the temperature did not go up by 10 degree. It, it went up only by 2 degrees, let's say. Then what happens? Still the error can be 0.5, right? Temperature measurements. Error can be 0.5 because the thermometer I have is 0.5 by 0.5. So out of 2 degrees, having an error of 0.5 means that's 25 percentage error. So if you use a lot of water, that is a problem you have. Temperature increment can be less resulting in higher percentage error. Shall we write this? Give a reason as to why it should not be too small. Water will not be sufficient or oh, you can say water will be insufficient to, to do what? To submerge the metal balls fully, to submerge the metal balls fully. Give a reason as to why it should not be too large. 
the increase in water's temperature. will be small leading to or resulting in higher percentage error higher percentage error okay next suppose the following values were calculated from your experimental results Heat gained by calorimeter, stirrer and water 2400 joules. Mass of metal balls 0.3 kilogram. Decrease in temperature of metal balls 64 degrees. Calculate the specific heat capacity of the metal balls. So you know mm r into or we can straight away write the values 0.3 kilograms into cm into uh, 64 degrees it has come down by so this is the heat released by released by the metal balls and it was gained by the water and stirrer which is 2400 joules correct yes so now i can divide this by 8 300 3 if I divide this by 0 0.3, here it will be 1000. Cm is going to be 1000 divided by 8, which is 125C, Joule, Kilogram, Kelvin. Joule per kilogram per Kelvin, 125. That is the specific heat capacity of the metal. Careful, give the answers with the right units. Huh? Give the answers with the right units. See, this is what I told you. In the experiment, when you are doing it in the lab, the calculations can be a bit complicated. Sometimes you, you may need even a calculator to solve it. But what you get in the exam, it's pretty straightforward. You can do it. Next one. Why is it not suitable to heat the metal balls in a water bath at 100 degree in order to obtain the metal balls heated to 100 degree for this experiment? I explained this why you can't get the metal balls dry. It will come, it will be wet. It will have water on the surface. Then when you put it into the uh, 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 calorie meter, the mass calculations will be wrong. So we will say, by doing this, we cannot get dry metal balls. adding wet metal balls will lead to error in mass or error in calculating mass. Understand? Next. Instead of small metal balls, is it possible to use metal powder in this experiment? Give two reasons for your answer. What is wrong with using metal powder? Couple of issues are there. Point number one, when you make the particles smaller and smaller, the surface area increases. So when you make it powder, the surface area increases a lot. So what, isn't it good? It is good, but the other, other side of it, when you are transferring it from your boiling tube to the, to the uh, 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 calorie meter, within that gap itself, it will start losing the heat because it has very high level of surface area. So you measured, okay, 100 degree, you are trying to transfer it quickly, even though you are transferring quickly, since it is powder, on, on, on its way, it will lose heat. Problem number one. Problem number two, sometimes part of this powder might float on the water. What is wrong if it, if it floats again it is exposed to the air? It will lose heat partially to the air. These are the problems using powder here. That's why we selected a small size uh, lead shots or metal balls 
not too big. We know the problems of having big ones. We know the problems of having small ones as well. Then we will say, no, first you say no, we can't. The reasons, since it has high surface area, it will lose heat to the environment. It will lose heat to the environment when being transferred. That is problem number one. The other problem, it may float in the water. Resulting in heat loss to the environment. Because of these reasons, we cannot use powder. We cannot use uh, the, the metal powder. We can use small metal shots, lead shots or metal balls. Not too big ones. Not the powder, small ones. Clear? So that's a very nice experiment, quite, quite a simple one. What did we do here? Finding the specific heat capacity of solid substance using the method of mixture. Method of mixtures. And we, we I explained already. Then while doing the experiment also, I have shown you everything in detail. I have taken three past paper structured essay type questions and I have shown you what kind of questions are asked in the exam. Right? If you have gone through all this, you will get a very good understanding and whatever you get in your exam, you will be able to answer. Practice all this well. We will meet up again with another experiment.